from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It's 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. It is April 20th. Good morning. Viva Fiesta. Yes. Happy Fiesta on this Saturday morning. Um, it was exciting to get things kicked off on Thursday with Fiesta Fiesta. Yes, a lot of people showed up for that and it was a, a warm experience. Oh I my gosh, you. it was so hot. It was so, so hot. Luckily it did cool down and Sarah, I know it's still humid out there, um, but I will take this level of humidity from what we've been having the last couple of days. Yeah, you know what, it is humid, but it's not as humid as the last few days, but we do expect storms today, and this is important if you have Fiesta plans. Now, the evening is when the storms are most likely, after 5 p.m., so keep that in mind. Most of the day today is just simply going to be humid, an isolated shower for the first part of the day, but it's after 5 p.m. that our storm chances really start to tick up. We'll get up to 79 degrees for the high, after 5 p.m., 70% coverage of storms. It's all because of a front. That front's going to move through, and it'll actually bring, bring breezy and cooler weather tomorrow. We don't have too many of these days left before the hot summer months. We're going to be only up to about 64 with low humidity tomorrow for the high. But first, I got to get you through your day and the storm chance there is the potential for localized flooding and even the possibility for some stronger storms. So I'll walk you through a timeline for your storms and what you need to know coming up in just a bit. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Now, Fiesta is here, and that means plenty of events for you and the family to, to enjoy this weekend. That's right. So our traffic authority, RJ Marcus, has a look at the road closures happening this weekend so you can plan your travels around all of them. Well, we have got another round of closures for our drivers on the far northwest side, but a little bit of good news. It's not expected to be as bad as what we've seen in the previous weekend. So let's break this all down. Basically, 1604 east and westbound. That will be shut down all the way from Vance Jackson to La Cantera Parkway throughout the entire weekend, reopening at 5 o'clock on Monday. But there is some good news. Uh, I-10 will actually be open in both directions on I-10 east and westbound. So you're still going to be able to get through the main lanes. But if you're trying to get from 10 to 1604. All the four main clover leaves here will be closed throughout the entire weekend. So we have some video of some of the work that's taking place out there. Check this out. Check out these beams. TxDOT is working on the second flyover ramp for the project. Last weekend, crews installed several beams for the new ramp that will connect 1604 West to I-10 West, and they're using 800 ton cranes to lift these beams. Last week, one of these was 140 feet long. So TxDOT expects weekend closures for the rest of the month to allow crews to install 20 steel beams for the construction of those flyover ramps. Now, the first ramp will be done by the end of this year and is expected to help with congestion in the area. If we come back out here real quick to maps, so we're going to have all this information on KSAD.com. Again, another full weekend closure here, so make sure that you stay safe and plan ahead if you're headed out to the far northwest side. RJ, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is dead following a motorcycle crash overnight. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning in the area of Highway 90 and General McMullen. Police say a man and a woman were riding on the motorcycle when it was sideswiped. Police say both riders were thrown from the motorcycle. The male driver was taken to the hospital with serious injuries. However, SAPD says the woman had severe head trauma and she died at the scene. So far, it's not known if the driver of the other vehicle stayed to help them. That area was shut down for several hours overnight. And a pathway for foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan is almost clear with final votes set for later today on the passage of a $95 billion in foreign assistance. However, as ABC's Allison Kosick reports, some lawmakers are opposing the measure and they are threatening to oust the House Speaker. Foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan is one step closer to passing after months of delays. Friday, the chamber voted 316 to 94 to advance the bills, setting up today's vote on the final passage of $95 billion in foreign assistance, which also includes conservative priorities such as a TikTok ban bill and sanctions on Iran. This is a major victory for House Speaker Mike Johnson. This is the best possible product that we can get under these circumstances. In a rare move, Democrats voting to save Johnson's plan after dozens of Republicans oppose the legislation. Democrats blasting Republicans for failing to back a package crafted by their own speaker. We're willing to lead. We're willing to govern. 
We're willing to do the people's business. Ronald Reagan would roll over in his grave if he saw what's going on here with the Republican Party. That bipartisanship making far-right Republicans even angrier as a third joins calls for Johnson to step aside. Those Republicans seeking tougher border security before any more aid goes to Ukraine. But some of those same Republicans blocked a Senate border security deal supported by both Democrats and Republicans just weeks ago after coming under pressure from Donald Trump. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, the first criminal trial of a former president is set for its opening statements on Monday. A full 12 person jury, along with six alter alternates, was finalized in former President Donald Trump's New York hush money trial yesterday. The trial judge also held what's called a Sandoval hearing. It addresses a defendant's criminal history and how much prosecutors can ask about that if that person testifies. And Trump has indicated that he intends to testify, which triggered the hearing. The judge will give his decision on the matter come Monday. The Foreign Affairs Secretary of Mexico stopped in San Antonio to talk about the immigration climate yesterday. This is the first time in more than 20 years a Mexican foreign secretary has visited the Alamo city. Alicia Barcena Ibarra says she wants to accomplish several things on the trip, like making sure the Mexican community living in Texas understands the programs they have access to and reaffirming an important aspect of what Mexico brings to the table every single year. We are already trading, uh, at least last year, the trading was around $865 billion. We trade almost 1.5 million per minute. We have a region where we can certainly build probably the most dynamic and powerful region, uh, economically speaking, of the world. Marcena Ibarra heads to Eagle Pass next. She'll be there today where she can get a firsthand look of what's happening along the border from the U.S.'s standpoint. Back here at home, there are many questions after an east side church went up in flames early Friday morning. It happened at New Testament Missionary Baptist Church. That's on East Crockett Street. The fire got into the attic, blackened the walls, as you see there, and destroyed music and sound equipment. The pastor of the church says his congregation will have to rebuild. We've lost, we've lost everything. Of course it breaks our heart, but we do know that, that we are the church. It's still not clear what sparked the flames. Crews have not ruled out the possibility that someone started the fire. And time now is 8.07 and 68 degrees for now. 68 degrees, a bit muggy out there, not as humid as we've been experiencing the past couple of days with that bit of breeze. Sarah Spivey says we have, oh, that is not a live look. I am sorry. It is not dark outside. The sun is up, but hey, Sarah Spivey says we have showers in our future. Possible possibility of storm. She'll explain that when we come back. Fiesta Gives Back is powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Fiesta gives back through the San Antonio Zulu Association. Established in 1976, this organization was founded with the mission to assist the greater San Antonio community. Proceeds from Fiesta's annual Taste of New Orleans event benefit the San Antonio Zulu Association, providing some much needed funding for youth scholarships for graduating high school seniors, as well as community outreach. The organization, with a membership of several dozen dedicated volunteers, also provides numerous philanthropic outreach programs throughout the South Texas community. So head on out to Sunken Gardens Theater this fiesta and enjoy authentic New Orleans style food and music. You'll have a great time while helping Fiesta give back. Okay, Sarah, it has been hot. Yeah. <laughs> Just in time for the kickoff of Fiesta, fiesta with Fiesta yeah. Fiesta. And like usually it's April and Fiesta usually encounters some some showers, yes. potentially some storms. And we usually have a cold front at some point too. I mean, there's been plenty of parades <laughs> where I remember sweating and also plenty of parades where I remember being chilly. And today is going to be one of those days where we'll have storms. The storms, but 
possibly a cool parade for the river parade on Monday. At least pleasant, pleasant. and with low okay. humidity. Yeah, so not necessarily chilly, but it is going to be nice. So there's okay. a lot to talk about in the forecast. I want to start with the day today. Outside right now, it is humid. It is muggy. Through the first part of the day here, it's going to be fairly quiet. You know, you may run into a shower. The chance for rain through the first part of the day and even into the early afternoon is only 20 to 30 percent. It isn't until after 5 p.m. that will start to see scattered rain with some storms in the mix as well. Temperatures will get up to 79 degrees, but then with the front moving through, we're going to and rain. We're going to see temperatures quickly fall by 10 o'clock. We're going to be near 60 degrees and it's by 10 o'clock that we'll start to see storms diminish. So there's a window there after 5 p.m. that we have the highest chance for storms. But before 5 p.m. today, again, just a reminder, it's going to be fairly quiet. If you have fiesta plans, go out, enjoy your day. Just know that after 5, you're going to want to be on alert because storms are going to be likely and that could be disruptive to any kind of outdoor plans. There's lots going on today with fiesta in mind. Now, as a result of that front, it'll be much cooler tomorrow with low humidity. So let's go ahead and start with that first headline humid outside right now. Here's a look at the airport. You can see the low clouds on the horizon there. It's 68 degrees at the airport, 68 in New Braunfels. Good morning, Pleasanton. It's 73, 70 in Hondo and 64 in Kerrville. We are seeing some areas of very light mist and drizzle, and because of that, visibility is reduced. You can see visibility down to five miles in Bernie, down to eight miles in San Antonio, and even just looking at that camera there. Again, you can see on the horizon uh, those low clouds. It is very humid outside. Dew points are rising. They're in the 60s right now, which is in the muggy category. But just as south of San Antonio, dew points in the 70s, oppressively humid. Here's what we've go got going on across the state of Texas. We're sitting in the humid air here in San Antonio, but up in the panhandle, there's drier air working its way in from the north. Now it's that combination of the dry air and the humid air that is allowing for storms to already be developed from San Angelo up toward Dallas. So as you can see, that combination of that drier air and that humid air already producing showers and storms. We're sitting along a stalled front near San Antonio, and that front will eventually be pushing through, bringing with it the rain from the north. So as we look at our future cast, yeah, one or two isolated showers during the day today, but after about Three, four o'clock, we'll start to see some development in parts of the hill country, even one or two showers or storms near San Antonio. But after five, watch what happens. Things become a lot more numerous. There will be a broken line of storms up near the hill country that'll be pushing through San Antonio after 5 p.m. And it's inside of this cluster of storms that will have pockets of stronger storms possible. Those will be moving south and by about midnight we'll be looking at our rain chances coming to an end in San Antonio. So if you're worried about a restless night's sleep with thunder and lightning, don't worry about that. Again, the window for storms is pretty much 5 p.m. to midnight. How much rain could we see? Well, widespread half an inch of rain is a safe bet. There will be a few lucky neighborhoods that get more than an inch of rainfall, though. I say lucky neighborhoods because we're still in drought. So plan for a muggy day today. Plan for scattered storms, mainly after 5 p.m. What are we going to be watching for as your weather authority? Well, localized pockets of flooding issues. That can happen if a heavy rain shower sets up right over downtown San Antonio. And if a stronger storm develops, we'll be monitoring for gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour, perhaps even some quarter sized hail. If you're planning on being out and about today, take the case out weather authority app with you. We'll send updates and potentially live updates right to your phone. After that front moves through, it's going to be really pleasant and cool tomorrow. 64 for the high. Stephanie and Sarah were talking about the river parade on Monday. Not necessarily cool, but pleasant with highs near in the 70s and low humidity. It's going to be so nice for the river parade. Humidity works its way back into our forecast on Wednesday. Of course, we've got a lot of events going on today. I've got a specific look at the Oyster Bank forecast for the day today. And we just got the pollen count in, so I'll have those updates for you. Uh-oh, that'll be interesting, the pollen count. <laughs> it will. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. We have Oyster Bank. We have Oyster okay, New Orleans. Orleans. 
And then downtown's going to be busy. Oh, yeah. very busy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. All right, it's 817 and 68 degrees. Let's take a look at our lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 481, Fireball 4, Dilly 42099, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 614, 15, 19, 23. Mega Millions, 1930, 34, 46, 58, Mega Ball 3, Mega Plier 3, good luck. Well, be on the lookout throughout Fiesta to spot this year's Fiesta Flambeau Grand Marshal Michael Quintanilla. So he's kind of hard to miss as he's almost always spotted wearing a Fiesta hat. And this year we caught up with him to learn how he got into the Fiesta hat making business and what plans he's got in store as he prepares a special Grand Marshal outfit. Feathers, butterflies and flowers, you name it, he's put it on a hat. Even his treasured childhood kite made its way onto this magnificent creation. I thought, hey, let me put the kite wings on the side of this hat, and I started to build a butterfly sanctuary inside there. Oh. I can't even wear it in my house. <laughs> The creative juices started flowing with his mother, who introduced a young Michael to the reuse of precious fashion finds in unlikely places. We called it Salvation Armani, <laughs> because we would find such wonderful things there. And uh, I love mixing that with uh, wonderful things that I have in my closet. You know, I have beautiful things as well. I have Prada and, you know, Ferragamo, but I also have Target and Goodwill. As a former fashion editor, there's no surprise that the clothes he matches to his hats are equally thought out. And aside from his sweet black and white dog, his home is a kaleidoscope of color. Everything else is exploding with color <laughs> and uh, 3D sparkles. And do you leave a trail of glitter where you go? I'm banned from many hotels <laughs> because of that. I will walk into a hotel and they'll say, wait a minute, are you packing confetti? Oh. <laughs> His first hat? It was a, a wonderful experiment. It was actually like engineering because I would stack three hats and walk around the house with it. I thought, okay, I want this one to like feel like it's falling off. His favorite hat? It's beautiful. It's, it's uh, fiesta flowers and all these feathers. And, and the way it's built is I have styrofoam cones that are stacked on top of each other. And then I just uh, inserted all the plumes into the cones and designed it and curled the feathers. And his next hat for Grand Marshal of the Fiesta Flambeau Parade? Well, all I can say is it's gonna be big, gonna be white, but it's still a work in progress. Is it gonna be about this tall? Yeah, about that tall. They usually, I usually can't, usually make them about that high, like about f three, four feet high. Other, uh, because if you do it any more than that, it gets too heavy. And of course, spectacular in Fiesta style. They're a holiday that you don't honor with an outfit? I, uh, I dress for all the holidays. I actually dress for every day of the year. There are many times when I'll go to my neighborhood HEB and the, the ladies who know me there, they, they want to send me home because I'm underdressed. <laughs> I can't wait to see the complete Grand Marshal outfit. So I, I was interviewing some other hat people uh -huh. at Fiesta. Fiesta. And my biggest question is, where do you guys store these all year? Oh, I know. Because one guy was like, I've been doing this for 15 years. And like his partner was there and he's like, I'm wearing an archive hat, like from 2000. Really? <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, but we have a storage unit. And then another guy was like, no, what I do is yeah. I recycle them every year. So I don't have, he's like, I use the same base. But, and then build on and then build well, that, it. That, that makes sense because some of like, well, I, I guess, well, you know, with wreath building, I don't make hats, but like some of the stuff when you hang it outside, oh. it gets faded. I so you have to so start much, over. Yeah. <laughs> you have to start over again. So, right. but to actually save it, you would you would need like a. And a lot of the times, uh, one of the ladies was like, "Well, we went smaller this year because we realized we couldn't fit into elevators because they're so big." Oh wow! Yes, uh, yeah. Things to think about when you're planning your fiesta outfit for sure. <laughs> it's 824 <laughs> and 68 degrees. Well, Taylor Swift's new albums are already making top charts, and a look at the new Transformers animated movie that's coming up after the break. Okay, this was very exciting for me. It was like a late birthday present. Taylor Aww. Swift's surprise double album, breaking records 
on Spotify. The streaming service says it is the most streamed album in a single day in Spotify history and also the most pre-saved one on their countdown page. Well, Taylor Swift re first released her highly anticipated 11th studio album, The Tortured Poets Department, on Friday. Then she surprise released an additional 15 song album titled TTPD, The Anthology. It's like 30 to 31 songs total. Yeah. I'm still soaking it all in, <laughs> dissecting all the lyrics. And introducing the second album she posted on Instagram, she'd written so much tortured poetry over the last two years that she just wanted to share it with everyone. Thank you, Taylor. Aww. Take these and access your full potential. Yes. It's time to show them we are more than meets the eye. So that was a look at the new <laughs> animated adventure Transformers 1, where Optimus Prime and Megatron get their origin story. There will be some familiar voices, including actor Chris Hemsworth, who voices the character Optimus Prime. So Transformers 1 opens in theaters on September 20th, and the animation here is so much different than the animation I used to watch <laughs> when I was a kid. I was like, oh my goodness. Like this, the straight it cartoon. Right, it doesn't look like animation. I mean, I, you know, I, I watched the old school Transformers. The voices seem kind of the same, though, after all these years. It's kind of funny. It's 829 and 68 degrees. Look out there with TransGuide for right now. A stalled vehicle right uh -oh. there I on... Can west at 1604. Yeah. And this is also I, the area where there are some closures, so just be aware of that. But if you are actually traveling on the highway I-10, you'll be able to get through that. Oh, this might be actual work truck then. If not a stalled vehicle. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah these so are the people the, walking around. Just a reminder that I 10 is closed at 1604. 1604 at I 10. 1604 is, yeah, is closed. closed. Be careful out there. We'll be right back. Good morning. It is 8.33 now on this Fiesta Saturday, April 20th. Viva Fiesta. Very excited that Fiesta season officially kicked off on Thursday with Fiesta Fiesta. Yeah, it was su successful because I think last year was the big rain out on the start right. of Fiesta. Right, so yeah. the pin pandemonium was in full pandemonium. <laughs> we gave out a lot of KSAT pins. How did y'all's pin giveaway go? It went, yesterday. it went really well. I was, you know, I was a little nervous, to be honest, because I was like, are people awake this early for the for the for metal pins, giveaway? Yes, yeah. <laughs> but yes, there, there was a, a nice big line. Everybody was super friendly. So it was a, it was a lot of fun out there yesterday at Co uh, Conviva. So, and yeah. Sarah, I know you've given away several pins we already as well. We have given away a lot of medals. And actually, Justin Horn and I have another medal giveaway next Tuesday. So s keep up with that. You know, we were mentioning how last Fiesta Fiesta of last year, we got ringed out. It just goes to show that we can get storms over Fiesta, and today we have the potential for storms mainly in the evening hours. So if you're headed out to Fiesta Oyster Bake today, know that uh, the first part of the day here is going to be quiet. Isn't, it isn't until after 5 p.m. that we start to see storms be uh, more likely around San Antonio. We'll, we have about a 70% potential for storms after 5 p.m. in San Antonio. Antonio. Temperatures will fall from the upper 70s into the low 60s. So plan accordingly. If you are going to be out and about enjoying Fiesta, make sure to have a plan to quickly duck inside or in some shelter just in case one of those storms pops up over where you're at. I showed you, uh, I mentioned I was going to show you the pollen count coming up. Well, we've got a pretty nice looking pollen count. There's only three allergens out there and all of them are low. Molds, pecan, and pine. Now as we look at the weather headlines today, again, I want to emphasize that before 5 p.m. today, it's simply just going to be humid. There could be some spotty showers, but it's not until after 5 p.m. that storms become likely and disruptive to outdoor plans. Tomorrow, it'll be much cooler with low humidity and highs only in the 70s because of the front moving through. We're going to walk you through your forecast uh, over the storm chances later on today. Is there any risk for severe weather? I'll have those details coming up in a few minutes. Stephanie, Sarah. Sarah, thank you. SAPD is using the sky to increase safety this year during Fiesta. That's right. Our Avery Everett shows us how the party is still going on, but safety is still top of mind. Fiesta can be loud. Rides, music and laughter. 
But if you listen closely, you'll hear the San Antonio Police Department taking its patrolling to new heights. Oh, we're staying ahead of the curve. We're just trying to keep everybody safe. SAPD is using drones during Fiesta this year to help traffic and crowd control. We can get officers there even faster, keep people safer. How is it a unique tool for SAPD? It's a unique tool because, well, first and foremost, we're about officer safety. So it's just another tool we get to use um, to keep them safe. So over the next 10 days, this part of the Alamo Dome parking lot will become SAPD's Fiesta substation. This will be their home base to keep an eye on all of the Fiesta events. And the drone gives them a new perspective to seeing San Antonio. We're embracing new technology to be able to do that. Right now, we're looking at an overview of Carnival. So that's us. That's us. From 400 feet away, that's the view you all have. That's us. Wow. You can see all the confetti in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got great zoom. I mean, that's yeah, obviously a huge yeah. feature. And that's what helps us, uh, you know, with traffic control, with uh, yep. crowd control, everything like that. You'll still see police officers on the ground at events. But SAPD says they're keeping a close eye on both the streets and the skies this Fiesta season. There's so much more of Fiesta to have, and there's so much more fun. But SAPD does want to emphasize that if you see something suspicious, say something. That's the best way to keep all of us out here safe. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. All the confetti in her hair. It's her first. Oh, her first official one. Yes, <laughs> yes. So Fiesta runs through April 28th. Here are some of the events happening today. Of course, we've been talking about the Fiesta Oyster Bake that mm. continues at St. Mary's University. You also have the Taste of New Orleans happening at the Sunken Garden Theater. I oh, love the Taste of New Orleans. So many delicious options out there. And then the San Jacinto Victory Celebration will be at the Alamo. You can also check out the UTSA Fiesta Arts Fair. So for a complete list of shows and events happening during Fiesta, just head over to KSAT.com where we have a day-by-day -day schedule and guide of everything you need to know Fiesta. And speaking of Fiesta events, traffic around town, it will be busy. Yes, it will. RJ Marcus has a look at what you need to know before you get out on the roadways. Well, Fiesta is officially underway, and here are some things to know if you're about to head out to some big events this weekend. First of all, Fiesta Oyster Bake, that kicks off. We also have Taste of New Orleans. So for all of our drivers, we do have Via Park and Ride available here. The Crossroads location will take you to Fiesta Oyster Bake, and they will pick you up at the Camino Santa Maria at Cincinnati Pickup and Drop-Off section. Also, the Taste of New Orleans there at Sunken Garden Theater, the Crossroads and Randolph locations will take you back and forth to Sunken Garden Theater. Theater. Some things to keep in mind if you're headed out to both of those events. We do also want to let you know about some street closures taking place in the downtown area because we have Fiesta de los Reyes that is starting off. Also, this will be these closures here will last throughout the entire Fiesta season. We have San Saba that's going to be closed from Dolorosa up to West Houston and then West Commerce will be closed from Santa Rosa to Pecos La Trinidad. Again, Market Square, Milan Park. This is around the UTSA downtown campus. These closures will be in place throughout the duration of Fiesta. So make sure you stay safe on the roads. For more information, head out to KSAT.com and Viva Fiesta, everybody. Viva Fiesta, RJ. Well, KSAT has a chance for you to enjoy a special party at the Battle of Flowers and Flambeau parades. So scan one of these QR codes to buy tickets. This includes assigned seating along the parade route food, drinks, and a chance to hang out with all of us. So while you're at it, you can also sign up to be a KSET Insider to be the first to get access to special events like these events in the future. Okay, are you Battle of Flowers or Flambeau? Well, what do you, uh, well I'm gonna be working, I'll be working yes. the Battle of Flowers. We're both working Battle yes. of Flowers, but what's your favorite parade? Uh, you know what? It's hard because like they're they're, they're both, so different. They're so, they actually are. People are like, oh, it's the same thing. It's no, like no, it's not. it's not. You got to go to both. No, so we're, it's not. We're going to both this year. Um, I mean, the, the battle the battle of fires is cool because I feel like it, it brings like all the, the school kids out. It you like know? starts the excitement. Yeah, it starts the excitement, and then the flambeau like really finishes it off with all yeah. the lights and everything. So That's a good way to put it. All around beautiful. I think so excited. Viva Fiesta! It's 840, 69 degrees. Let's take a look outside with live cam. Yes, yeah, so we can tell you that even though there's humidity out there this morning, it's not as bad as it's been earlier this week, but that humidity is going to stick around during the day. And Sarah tells us, you know, be aware of the showers coming this evening. We're going to check in with her in just a minute. Earth Day is Monday, and this year's theme for Earth Day is Planet versus Plastics, promoting a goal of reducing our plastic production by 60% by 2040. 
That's right. And a lot of the plastics break down into our soil. They release those toxic chemicals into our ecosystem, which ends up in our water, our food, and our air. It's terrifying things we don't even realize. So in this week's Gardening with Kason, I show you how to take plastics out of gardening and what you can replace it with. Microplastics are making us sick. How? When they break down into our soil, they release toxic chemicals that end up in our food, water, or even in the air we breathe. This year's theme for Earth Day is planet versus plastics. So here are some alternative ways to keep plastic out of the garden and out of our soil. Your lawn kinda sucks, don't want it. Don't replace it with turf. That's a lot of plastic in the soil. Plus it gets really hot and harbors a lot of bacteria. Replace it with native plant beds and mulch. When making a flower bed or using mulch, never line with plastic or even fabric, which can have tiny bits of plastic in it. It will make a mess later and chokes the health of your soil. Mulch naturally fights weeds and feeds the soil with its micronutrients. And if you have a weed, just pull it. You can find native mulch at Rainbow Gardens and many more alternatives. Replace plastic pots with terracotta, clays, or even cocoa baskets, which are lined with coconut fibers and are 100% biodegradable. Get rid of those pesky plastic bags and make your own fertilizer, aka compost, by taking your old food scraps and letting nature do its thing. On my Instagram and ksat.com, you can find the story where I show you how to build your own compost bin for under 40 bucks. Happy gardening, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, Sarah, it's now gonna be a requirement any time you do a gardening segment that you wear your little pigtails. You're so cute. Well, Thank it you. works for the summer. Maybe not in the winter. You're going to bundle up yeah. then. But my little yeah. chunguitos. Yes. <laughs> you know, it was hot, so I had to pull my hair back. Yeah. Hey, we do what we can do, right? You and have today, to do that to fiesta for fiesta yeah, too. Some people yeah, people are certainly going to have to do that. Although you're going to want to bring an umbrella today mm. if you're planning on being out later tonight for okay. fiesta. And there's a lot of plans going on late tonight. The chance for showers and storms is highest after 5 p.m. today. Before that, we're not going to see too much out there in San Antonio other than humid weather and perhaps a little bit of drizzle. And as you can see outside right now, it is plenty humid. It's 69 degrees at the airport, 73 in Castroville, 66 in Converse, and 73 in Pleasanton. Visibility is lowered somewhat because we have such high humidity out there and there could be pockets of drizzle. As we take a look across the state of Texas, I want you to notice that there's plenty of storms from San Angelo up to Dallas. This is a boundary of dry and humid air. And then at the surface here in San Antonio, we've got a stationary boundary. So a lot of things are in place for later on today for us to see some uh, scattered showers and storms. But as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, again, the first part of the day here is going to be fairly quiet. 74 at noon, only a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. It isn't until after 5 p.m. that we really start to see our rain chances spike up. We'll get up to 79 degrees, so it's going to be warm. But then by the evening hours, that's when we'll see more widespread showers and storms and temperatures will fall into the low 60s as the rain and the cold front moves through. So as we look at your future cast, here's what we've got planned for you later on today. Again, only a few isolated showers and storms until 5 p.m. and that's when we'll see storms really start to come together across the hill country and across San Antonio metro area. We'll see a cluster of storms and within the cluster there could be stronger storms embedded with pockets of heavy rain, potentially even some stronger wind gusts. But by midnight, most of that rain's going to be out of here and in the overnight hours, rain will come to a complete end. So here's your weather need to know for this Saturday. Plan for a muggy day. Plan for a few storms mainly after 5 p.m. Again, that's your timeline. What we'll be watching for here at the KSAT Weather Authority Lab is we'll be watching for localized flooding issues. We'll also be monitoring that if a stronger storm develops, it could contain some gusty winds and perhaps even some up to quarter sized hail. We will keep you posted if you want to be safe. If you're going to be out and about, have the KSAT Weather Authority app with you. We will go live from that app as needed. Once that front moves through, again, it's going to be a nicer day tomorrow. On the cooler side, high temperature of only 64. We're going to be a bit windy. We'll have low humidity. 
not only on Sunday, but also on Monday. Monday is going to be very nice. We'll have low humidity, a high temperature of only 74. Great weather for the River Parade. First day of Nyosa will be great too. Then we'll see humidity work its way back in on Wednesday. And our next chance for rain is only going to be isolated rain, 20% Friday into the weekend. So hopefully the only major interruption to any kind of fiesta plans will be tonight. I really don't see anything uh, that could be in the way of things next weekend for us. Okay, okay. Well, hopefully everybody out there is safe and prepared for any kind of downpours. That yeah, again, the Weather Authority app is great because it has a radar on there too. So if you start to see or feel like there's rain, you can just pop it open and see where that rain is at. Yeah. That's what we used last year when Fiesta Fiesta got rained. We were oh, like yes. looking at them, we were like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think this is going to go away. Yeah, it really <laughs> comes in handy, worth the download for sure. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. It's 849 and 69 degrees. Well, coming up, a wildlife center in San Antonio struggling as they care for hundreds of animals. Why this nonprofit is trying to get the word out about which animals you should and should not bring to them. That's coming up next. Welcome back. Staff at Wildlife Rescue and Rehabil Rehabilitation Incorporated have had a lot of mouths to feed this spring staff. Right now, they have more than 100 baby possums that they're nurturing to health. Well, our Patty Santos tells us the nonprofit hopes to spread awareness about which urban wildlife that you should and should not be brought out to them. I mean, all day long, we get a lot of stuff in. Sarah Davis and Danielle Moncado have had a busy spring feeding a lot of hungry orphans. I think we have over 100 possums inside. And twice as many squirrels, not to mention the many other mammals and birds <laughs> that are brought in daily. We feed them more the smaller they are. And and as they get bigger, their feeds get reduced to smaller amounts a day. Um, the smallest amount of feeds we do is like twice a day. They're part of the troop of more than 50 staff with Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Office in San Antonio and Candalia. We uh, focus specifically on the rescue and rehabilitation of native Texas wildlife. Urban wildlife like songbirds, foxes, and owls. He was also orphaned, um, and he also has something we call it like splay leg. Many times, they're victims of human encroachment. Sometimes if mama doesn't have the right nesting materials, living in the city, she can't make a proper nest, and so sometimes they struggle to form correctly. Executive Director James Martinez says inflation is impacting how much they do for these animals. This year, the nonprofit is working with a $4.6 million budget. From those funds, around $600,000 are spent on food. Through the hotline, they answered 17,000 calls. If you find the animal, it's been two hours, uh, and the mother has not come back for the animal, then you call us and we'll walk you through the steps and what to do next. Martinez says only animals that are clearly hurt should be brought to them. I know, this was cute for us. So every box here is a baby, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, so this is just today's um, intake. Money helps support their mission, but so does volunteering, because these wild babies are a handful. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Hi, welcome back. It's 857. A lot of people excited about all of the KSAT Fiesta medals. That's right, and Texas Eats is doing a medal giveaway at La Michoacana Meat Market on Nacogdoches on the city's northeast side. David Elder, you have some excitement going on out there. We got some excitement. We got some steak cooking up here in just a little bit. We have Arlene Escamilla here with La Michoacana. We're going to be talking with her in just a little bit. And we got a rowdy group of people over here. What's going on, y'all? Look at this. It's, I'm trying to say rowdy. I'm trying to get them hyped. It is early. It is early. <laughs> they're, they were hyping me up already. Y'all, the giveaway line starts at 9, and the giveaway starts at 11 a.m. here at La Michoacana. It's 13107 Nacogdoches Road. Make sure you come out here. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. And we got a great group of people. We got a great group of people out here. And we got Fiesta Vader walking around just using the force trying to take all the Fiesta medals. No! No! <laughs> but we have a lot of fun, y'all. So make sure you come on out here. La Michoacana on the northeast side, Nacogdoches Road. The line starts at 9, and the giveaway starts at 11 a.m. We're going to keep the party going. We got some dance battles about to happen. We got food. We got a lot of fun. But we'll send it back to y'all in the studio.